There are also waves rippling through the interior of stars. This year, a new item is on the agenda. Space weather. Strange space weather makes for strange Earth weather. Space weather is the outer space equivalent of weather on Earth. From now on, space weather will be a matter of regular conversation. Space has radiation storms, solar wind, flares, and coronal mass ejections. The source of space weather is the sun. Solar energetic particles at the magnetic poles can force the rerouting of international airline flights. Currents generated by magnetic storms can damage transformers and increase corrosion in energy pipelines. Solar storms have been known to disable satellites, cause temporary radio blackouts and power outages, and interfere with GPS signals. Multi-ton transformers fried by such a storm could take years to repair and impact national security. I don't know if you know this. Thor news is for winners, and that's why you're here. To stick around. Good morning, folks. Are you cool? Hey, everybody. It's your head jump. Because I'm going to be dropping some hard Thor News science upon you. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Party dance time. Thor News presents... We've got a video message. I'm going to have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Welcome to Asteroid Fight Club. I'm your host, Thor. Today we have a we are over at physics.org talking about how solar storms trigger surprising phenomena close to Earth. Apparently, there's a surprising and unknown mechanism in play during solar storms. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. It's like the sun is almost powerful enough to disrupt the climate, you would think. And it has been my assertion that when the sun acts weird, Earth weather acts weird, and people act weird, and the world is weird, right? Yeah, that's because the sun's been freaking out, bro. Okay. In connection with violent solar eruptions, large variations occur in electronic density in the ionosphere over Greenland, which interferes with GPH navigation signals as well as flight and satellite communications. Eruptions on the sun's surface send clouds of electronically charged particles towards Earth, producing solar storms that, among other things, can trigger the beautiful northern lights over the Arctic regions. But the storms may have a strong impact on the efficiency of communication and navigation systems at high latitudes. It is therefore important to study the phenomena. What are you kidding? Crazy talk. Putting money towards studying the sun? Are you crazy? How can we afford to do that when all the money needs to go to the James Webb Space Telescope to study dark matter, dark energy, how the solar system was formed, and are aliens out there? You know, I mean, sure, studying the sun can lead to better solar power, getting off our addiction to the combustion engine, which runs on petroleum, and a bunch of other things, but science and religion seem to agree that liking the sun is bad. Asterisk. New research from DTU Space and University of New Brunswick, see it's NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and University of Illinois, I didn't read their names, Professor Richard Langley, Dr. Attila Komjatha, he, and University of Illinois, Dr. Mark Butala, shows that apparently there is a surprising and unknown mechanism in play during solar storms. Let me say that again. Apparently, there is a surprising and unknown mechanism in play during solar storms. During solar storms, large bursts of electrons are usually sent into the part of Earth's atmosphere called the ionosphere, which starts about 80 kilometers above Earth. This phenomenon occurs especially at high latitudes. It happens because the magnetic field created by the eruption on the sun interferes with the Earth's magnetic field. And insert here in the comment section how you think carbon is really screwing up our magnetic field. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> I don't know. The whole world is crazy. I don't know if I can make it anymore. Keep it together, man. Okay. Self. Good idea. It happens because the magnetic field created by the eruption on the sun interferes with the Earth's magnetic field. It opens, so to speak, up to allow particles and electrons that would otherwise be reflected to penetrate the ionosphere. It is a known phenomenon, but it turns out that the electrons at the same time disappear from large areas, which has not been demonstrated earlier. What? But it turns out that electrons at the same time disappear from large areas, which has not been demonstrated earlier. That's weird. We made extensive measurements in connection with a specific solar storm over the Arctic in 2014. And here we found that electrons in large quantities are virtually vacuum cleaned from areas extending over 500 to 1,000 kilometers. It takes place just south of an area with heavily increases in electron density known as patches, says Professor Per Hoag from DTU Space. The results of the research were recently published on the front page of the renowned scientific journal Radio Science. The discovery is an important piece in the jigsaw puzzle of understanding solar storms and their impact on Earth's ionosphere. 
it is a surprising discovery that we hadn't anticipated. We can see that it happens, but we don't know why. However, other data sets from Canada indirectly support our new observations. A, you hoser, says per Hogue. Dramatic changes in the magnetic field. I know this is kind of doomy, man. So, dramatic changes in the magnetic field. The explanation of the phenomena should probably be found in the geomagnetic processes in the Earth's magnetic field in a direction away from the sun. The composition of the magnetic field undergoes dramatic changes in the area between the solar wind and the Earth's magnetic field, triggering powerful bursts of energy. Triggering powerful bursts of energy. The forerunners to the phenomena is a violent eruption on the Earth's surface, also known as coronal mass ejections, or CME, where bubbles of hot plasma and gas in the form of particles, electrons, and a magnetic field are hurled in the direction of Earth, says Perhag. As the geometric solar storm took place in the ionosphere over the Arctic in February 2014, it was measured via satellites and land-based measuring stations, among other things, via the GPS network GNET in Greenland, which DTU helps run via DTU's geomagnetic measuring stations, the Global Navigation System GPS, and the various American-Canadian satellites. Wow, Canada has satellites? Good job, guys. Thus, large data volumes from the solar storm were recorded. The research extends far beyond the discovery that electrons are pulled out during solar storms. Tybor Durganix, PhD student at DTU Space and main author of the new article in Radio Science. There are two aspects of this research. It can both be used for a number of practical purposes, and then there is a theoretical part which is about achieving a better basic understanding of these phenomena. Hey baby, I would like to understand your phenomena. I shouldn't say that, that would get me in trouble. Our work can contribute to making navigation more reliable during ionospheric storms in the Arctic region. Our new research has enabled us to identify a number of critical factors that affect the quality of satellite-based navigation, and to assess the probability of when these factors may occur. At a more theoretical level, we have found out that during solar storms, electrons are removed in the ionosphere, which is the opposite of what you would intuitively expect. That's true. When the magnetic field from solar eruptions it's the Earth's magnetic field in the ionosphere. Their force fields are mixed. Dun dun dun. Consequently, unstable areas, so-called patches, are created in the Earth's ionosphere, extending over large areas near the North Pole. The area of patches at the polar cap may extend over 500 to 1,000 kilometers, with electron speeds exceeding 1,000 meters per second. This gives rise to the surging powerful northern lights and creates turbulent conditions. That seems to add more evidence to my, when the sun freaks out, the weather freaks out, people freak out. Theory. Interferes with navigation and communication systems. Oh yeah, a big storm. What the hell? I'm gonna have to cut that out. This must be a European article. Why is physics.org showing me a row of bush and teeth, mice and Trump? Also, a giant solar storm could melt everything on Earth. Well, I mean like electronics and communications and stuff. But you knew that. Knowledge about solar storms are important, as communication with high, with airborne signals via satellites and radio play and increasingly and increasingly important in society. What? Knowledge about solar storms are important as communication with airborne signals via satellites and radio play, an increasingly important role in society. I think that's what they meant. Solar storms may interfere with GPS satellites and their signals, make radio communication fail, and cause extensive power failures. Also, it's been known to catch power lines on fire. The sun can catch shit on fire, yo. Who would imagine that? A giant ball of fire can catch stuff on fire. Crazy. The risk of disruptions in the atmosphere is one of the reasons why no routine flights are made over the Arctic. Dun dun dun. Q flat earthers call them bullshit. Although this would shorten air travel between Europe and America, the high frequency signals used by commercial flights over Greenland will be subject to interference during solar storms. The ability to predict and take into account these kind of conditions is therefore important for future commercial air traffic in the region. The same applies to marine traffic in the Arctic. Professor Perhoge hopes that the work conducted at the DTU space, in addition to ensuring more knowledge about the phenomena, will contribute to the development of communication and navigation systems that can take into account conditions during solar storms to ensure safe flights and sailing in the polar cap areas. DTU Space is currently participating in several research projects under ESA and EU Horizon 2020 program, which develops systems that can handle conditions during space weather and solar storm conditions for aviation and marine traffic, among other things. Okay, so the sun is powerful leap and can fuzz shit up, yo. Good to know. Peace out. God bless everyone. This one may have been boring. Maybe it had too much science in it. Oh no.